We only do things in the most glamorous of settings, and here we are back at the back alley of Lee's Palace, next to the dumpsters, with uh, Peter and Bjorn from Peter, Bjorn, and John. Uh, hi, guys. Hey. Uh, um, I, the first thing that I need to ask is, what was the goop being thrown at you in, in the video? Ah, uh, the, the messy <laughs> stuff. The, the messy, horrible, from, yes. Uh, coming up from the floor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's blue. It was blue, definitely blue. It was like um, it's yogurt. Of, uh, yogurt, yogurt with with something mixed in it, like something blue. We had to scrub those, uh, you know, as well, I think. eggs and Terrible. we had to scrub the whole s stage like two hours out in the snow after in the middle of the night, and also like f we have to. F sort out the whole studio's like backdrops. Oh, I, I guess so because otherwise after a couple of hours it would smell like a baby threw up all over the all over the place. Ooh. Yeah, we kind of did we kind of smelled like that for 2 months after that. See all, 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 all in the name of rock and roll. Now you you shot films for all the other songs on on Gimme Some. Yeah. It, uh, are they performance videos or tell me about them? They're mostly performance videos, but some weird stuff goes on in them, like um, unexpected things happen. But there's one where we have dinner as well, because we were shooting this whole thing in two days, so they scheduled one video for, what, you shot for pasta. What, 11 videos in two days? Yes. Exactly, yeah, they, they put one in our lunch time, <laughs> to like gain a couple minutes. I guess this is the kind of thing that you can do with, you know, you tour with a small HD camera and you got a laptop with Final Cut or, or something on it and you just whip these things out, can't you? If it was that easy, we would have made like 450 videos, but, but it's more like we, had, we didn't have really money to spend like, you know, two days on each song and we, wa we rather wanted to make all the songs than just one song, so. We, we went into a proper studio and we had like a lot of people propping in. Good cameras. Good cameras, a lot of cameras, but the... Uh, you know, with the second chance one, we could only do it once. Mm. That was the beauty of it too. So we didn't have a <laughs> <second chance. laughs> yeah, that uh, you wouldn't want to do that too many times, would you? No, no. Um, Give me some is a lot punkier than the albums that came before. Uh, but but you that was you had actually signaled your intention to be that way going into this record, didn't you? Yeah, we wanted to m make a record that reflect our live shows a bit more. And live, we always had like a lot of energy and jumping around and power pop-ish feeling to it. So we often get the reaction from people after live shows. Either they think the record is great and live shows suck, or they think the record is lame after seeing the live show and they want us to put out records that sounds like the live show. So we want to do that too this time, make well, a record that sounds like the live show. I, I, I saw you guys open for Depeche Mode on the Tour of the Universe tour, and I, I, I was surprised. I'd never seen you before, and I was surprised at how muscular the uh, the live shows were versus yeah. uh, versus what the record was. Thank you, and it was also during that tour we um, we played mostly for a living thing on that tour. Of course, mm -hmm. it was around that time, but we did a couple of small shows after because we we felt a bit like incomplete playing only like 35 minutes. So we went to play like small shows after, and then it really felt like we should do like the trio, you know, easy setup, uh, you know, buzzcocks thing. So. Right. I think my favorite song on the album is uh, I Know That You Don't Love Me. I, I, and it's the very last song on the record, and, and it's, uh, I don't know, it, it's, just, it's, it's got a, a real driving sort of yeah, vibe to it. It's great. Yeah. It might, might, might be the most live song on the album, too. It's, yeah, a, good, it's, it's a really good take. Take. The second yeah. take or yeah. something. And we just, like, we like it, too. We, 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 we do a... I don't know, we do it every night almost, and it feels like no one can really come and say we're a bad band when we play that. No, I, I, <laughs> and I, I, would, I would imagine that live it goes a little bit longer than it is on the record. It just feels like it would be one of those yeah. songs that you could extend, because it feels that good. Bit, yeah, different, different nights. That's the beauty of it. You never know. I, I heard you talking earlier that you were into some of the West Coast American bands these days and some of the shoegaze thing that's happening right now. Right. Can, can you run through some of those bands again that, uh, that really no, caught your attention? There's, 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 maybe there's no connection really, but like up San Francisco there's like the OCs and Ty Seagal and that stuff. And um, down, I think it's sort of further down, there's like some shoegaze stuff like Wild Nothing. There's a band, 
bear wires maybe mm -hmm. too it's really really good it's like a indie rock cc top or something that oh really like, yeah it's a good band there's a there's a canadian band that you may be able to uh, track down if you like that sort of stuff they're called raised by swans and they're they're very much like uh, wild nothings um and, and they got that oh, interesting. that fuzzy sort of san francisco current shoegaze vibe that's going on right now raised by swans gonna yeah check that check definitely yeah. check them out so the uh, the album's gonna uh i guess you're well, the album's been out what since uh, since March, so uh, the bubble continues for a while. A lot of festivals this summer. Uh, we have some European festivals, like seven, six, eight. I don't know <laughs> exactly the number, but uh, it's not a whole bunch. We want to cherry pick a bit, you know. Feels like last album was more for festivals, and this album is more for clubs. Mm. So we're gonna focus on a long uh, North American tour in the fall. Um, definitely come back here to and just we're going to play like our you know a lot of our favorite venues and maybe, maybe in the fall we can get uh, Borja Salming out to uh to to see your show can we are are you guys hockey fans i am totally but he's I'm not uh, totally <laughs> no, i'm not totally <laughs> no but he i mean he's a legend of course also the second guy in sports in sweden that made underwear after bjorn borg so really yeah but you're selling underpants. Yeah. See, I didn't know that. <laughs> See, Sweden's this mysterious country. And, uh, I have to visit sometime. Well, th thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, give me some of the album, and uh, I really like it. It's If you thought that these guys could only whistle, wrong. It is a, a fascinating, punky sort of record. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Appreciate See you. It. Thank you.